Welcome and hello. Let's talk the news. Today is June 29th, 2024. All right, let's start this weekend off right with the premiere of Mad Max Supreme Court Edition. There's been just a few minor rulings that we just have to go over this from this past week. The big news that everyone is talking about is the obstruction charges being overruled for the January 6th investigators. They're saying this was an overreach. These obstruction charges basically said that if you tamper with documents, records, or other stuff used in an official proceeding, then you can be held for this federal level of, of obstruction. And the U.S. Supreme Court said, hey, uh, there weren't really documents or records involved uh, with many of these January 6th rioters. If you think that this all means that all January 6th rioters are now free from prosecution, uh, you'd be incorrect. If you think that this alleviates Trump from having to stand trial in the Jack Smith federal case, you'd also be wrong. Only about 18% of the 1,400 rioters charged from January 6th were within the scope of the law in question, and it's still up in the air how many of those that it will actually apply to, and we'll then see maybe their charges reversed based upon the specifics of each case. What it does do is ensures that those cases need to be reevaluated. It does help Trump also since he has obstruction charges from the federal court case from Jack Smith. But after reading the indictment in the federal case, those obstruction charges do include alleged events that would seemingly qualify for the impairing access to tampering with documents and records like forging elector certificates to, you know, count fraudulent electors. Whether there's strong enough evidence from Jack Smith's stance or not is what will determine if those specific charges should continue going forward. Keep in mind that there are four separate charges and each of them stand on their own. So even if this removed two of them from being prosecuted, the two obstruction charges, the other two in the indictment would still need to be adjudicated. As for the January 6th defendants, their cases are still in limbo and this would clearly not apply to those charged with more than obstruction, like in the cases that involve seditious conspiracy or assaulting officers. The Supreme Court, in another ruling, successfully manages a power grab for the judicial branch. In the past, if a law passed by Congress was seen as not specific enough, then the law would defer to the interpretation of the enforcement agencies. In this case, our executive branch, the federal government level, including the president. Then, if something was seen as unfair or unlawful, of course, it'd get ruled on by the courts. A kind of checks and balances, you might say, that may have been slightly weighted in the executive branch's side of things in recent history. This all so that regulations from the federal agencies like the EPA, uh, which are hard to get incredibly specific on for legislation, will no longer have the deference power behind them. Instead, it will bring these powers under the states to pollute as they see fit, not enforce safety standards should they not wish, and give big corporate powers what they've wanted for a long time. Reverting us back to before the 1980s when you could freely pump toxins in the air, water, and into the food we eat because of the ambiguity of the law. That also brings more power into the Supreme Court rulings and judicial powers across the nation because they'll be adjudicating all of those things when they go to court. This could simply be a disaster if things don't just manage to run similar to the status quo. I guess we'll just cross our fingers and wait and see. And the last on the Supreme Court list, legalizing slavery. Wait, I mean, sort of, actually. Sleeping outside in public spaces can now lead to fines and jail time. I wonder if this will still apply to things like public lands. Camping in backcountry no longer an option, maybe. Did they think about that? In one instance already, homelessness is now illegal with fines and jail time if you don't sleep in a homeless shelter with the city, which the city conveniently doesn't have. Jail time is expensive, costs people lots of money, and this is the public, not the homeless person. Uh, and guess what? Hasn't been shown to lower homelessness. In another instance, a city has a shelter that requires working at it upwards of 40 hours a week for no pay and has required church attendance. Hmm. Free labor, required religious teachings amongst a vulnerable group of people who don't really have another option enforced by law. Sounds like we've fully gone back in time, or at least we're getting there in some places. Yay for the Supreme Court. They're doing more than Congress. Seriously, though, with justices like these, who needs enemies? In, these, in less dangerous news, what mass shootings happened yesterday? In Corpus Christi, Texas, on the 2600 block of Burford Street, two individuals were killed, three injured. Amongst the killed was a 15-year-old teenager. 
the police are seeking more information to determine exactly what happened and why. In Niagara Falls, New York, on the corner of 11th Street and La Salle Avenue, four people were injured, amongst them a 14-year-old teen when a drive-by came by and shot up a park. Uh, the initial report says they were targeting another group, but opened fire, which led to bullets ending up in the post-graduation celebration taking place across the street. And let's end on a controversial topic. The only sane use of IMDb is sorting movies and TV shows by their rankings and then reversing that so the lowest ranked are on the top. And then you watch them in that order. Worst to best. Try it. You will never go back.